Episode 20, non-standard. Another touching character development flashback backstory. <laughs> In the third grade? Is this Toto? <laughs> he was just destined for greatness, huh? He was born this way. <laughs> Damn. He just came out of the womb punching. And then Haru Haru Haruka appeared on her Vespa. <laughs> this is very FLC on them. Na -na 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 -na. <laughs> I would actually be pumped if this whole episode was just Toto's childhood life. And we're back to the present. Sort of hoping for that, that Toto backstory, but this is gonna be cool too. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. I don't even need the stat boost from, from exposition. You got it. <laughs> no problem. See, so he's a thinking man. It's not all about punching real hard. You gotta do the analysis first. And then you punch real hard. Speaking of Toto and this villain, I was reminded of the fact that all of these henchmen curses are representative of some aspect of the planet. Land, water, this one I think is trees or the forest or whatever. But if I'm getting this right, it's not that they are manifestations of nature's rage. They are manifestations of humanity's fear or maybe anxieties about nature, which makes it so much more interesting. Because just thinking about it that way, to me, makes it real. At its most basic, there's just the inherent fear of nature that I think is not just learned by humans, but is built into our very psyche. We're born being afraid of certain things like heights or large and fast moving objects, things with big teeth, the dark, etc. But on top of that, and maybe at a more conceptual level, there seems to me to be this growing guilt about just the, the fact of being alive. Human existence seems to be thought of as a blight, you know, or like an accident on the planet that is a negative force. Perhaps it's about just the guilt of the knowledge that all life requires sacrifice of some kind. I mean, just to live means to consume, right? Let alone the ancestral legacy of not just, you know, our human ancestors, but of all of nature that came before us. And that is a heavy weight to carry if one cannot find meaning in that. If we feel like there is no greater direction for us except to consume, if that makes sense. What makes me extra curious about the direction though, and the author's vision for this, is that part of that view hinges on the separation of man and nature. Interestingly, Toto himself just gave a whole speech about connecting to everything all at once. So this is the ultimate connected man fighting against not necessarily nature, but humankind's fear of nature in what might end up being an ideological clash with at least some link to misanthropy, which seems to be the, the villain's whole thing. Yeah, they're so small. Yeah, that's the most beautiful one. Right, right. It's not at full HP, at least. You don't really know what that is yet, right? Also, like, you know, most of the characters in the show, it has the most powerful attack of all. Punching. <laughs> Alright, I'll, I'll accept it. Whatever you say. Believe in Toto. My Galaxy Brain CPU. <laughs> He also has level 9,000 humility. But like I said, you know, get out of his way. If there's any chance he can accomplish it, someone like that will. <laughs> Galaxy Brain IQ did not, uh, not see that basic attack. I'm still believing. I haven't given up yet. <gasps> no, how did you cut away from that? No, no, no. Believe. The switching technique! <gasps> oh my god, that was amazing. Right, and it was demonstrated before. That was a setup for this. <laughs> that was brilliant. Yeah, yeah, boogie woogie, indeed. How much HP did that drain? Oh, he can do it with anything, or anyone at least. Nice. Seems somewhat unnecessary in this situation, but still awesome. <laughs> oh, I see, I see. He can't defend. Oof. Like I said, punching the ultimate attacks. <laughs> That's so satisfying. He doesn't even know where he is right now. Yuji gets the benefit of so many awesome tag teams. Punch him in the rose for your measure. This is just, this is just so satisfying. I love how much they're giving us of this. Oof. Awesome screen. Death screen. When nature becomes afraid of humanity. 
Yeah, but that kind of luck is something that is dictated by the, the upper bounds of your skill, if that makes sense. Interestingly, I think the zone is something that I was alluding to before with Toto, about not having any waste, you know, feeling like you're exactly where you want to be and where you should be. And so it's like 100% or very high devotion to a particular task without distraction. Distractions like anxiety or lingering thoughts from other aspects of life, etc. Which is probably why it feels so good. You know, I'm, I grow increasingly convinced that not only that there is objective-ish meaning to life, but that we are designed to find it. Or looking at it the other way, that the way we are designed, we feel the best as we get closer and closer to, to the things that are best aligned with whatever that flow of objective-ish meaning is. I'm sure everyone knows the moments of feeling that, as they call it, omnipotence, although maybe it's not that extreme. And it probably coincided with an area of extreme creation or growth, which seems to, at least on some level, have value as far as that objective-ish meaning is concerned. Perhaps that's what Toto's life is, you know, it's just living in the zone. Did it again. I'm so proud of you. Did he just do it twice in a row? So three for the day? Is he about to break the record? That's a tie, right? That's four for the day. He's crying. He's so worried about Sukuna. He's missing the fact that he's getting black flash every, every millisecond. <laughs> Fake out. Also a Pokemon technique. He flinched. Yeah, speaking of meaning. Still want that backstory though. He just broke the record. Just like that. Toto always believed. <laughs> Toto saw this coming from the beginning. It's pretty amazing, he's still fighting. Now that he's doing a great job. He's basically now just existing to make these two look amazing. <laughs> Not complaining. It's working. Still wondering what that rose is though. It's just so much fun they wanted to add a little pop song. For the occasion. So reminds me of Persona. Supreme Vegetable! At least he's having a good time. It's not just him. That's why I didn't reveal it. It's more power. More powerful. But they don't know. Forget the boost. The danger to him though is that he will go too far. For me, the, the beautiful thing about his character is that he's so unencumbered by fear and anxiety and just immediately goes from thought to action. But there's a reason why anxiety exists. I think for most people, it's a toxic force that is kind of a remnant of something that's no longer useful and acts as, as an impediment to taking risks that are not actually real risks in an important sense. Nevertheless, you ignore all fear and all anxiety at tremendous danger to yourself. And I feel like that is the risk for Toto. He'll be glorious while he's alive, but don't see him making it to extreme old age. Even talking about risks, I said you avoid the risks that are gonna be clear game overs, you know, in terms of like actually dying, getting wiped out. And you take all the risks that only contain emotional pitfalls as as dangers. This is not that, clearly. This is life or death. And, and flashback. <laughs> Is it Takata? <laughs> the one thing he's afraid to lose. Is this a vision? Probably grew by getting something more important than blood. Right. There's that IQ. <laughs> he turned off his energy. Very smart. I mean, he makes big claims, but then, you know, he lives up to them. Like, Takata is the, the voice of his, like... His... Risk management. This is just so much fun. <laughs> this whole thing. <laughs> Hit him with the truth, Toto. Before you take him out. That is a great question. Can you like split them in half or something? No. And French. Oops, energy. This is a very powerful weapon in the hands of a very powerful man. Dispense with Yuji though. <laughs> the exorcism. Not just the trees, but the land as well. Show him how you feel about nature, Toto. Is he getting life from the. Yeah, who's the parasite now? Climate activist, am I right? 
This is the kind of curse that rides solo on a, on a jet to a fuel emissions conference. Hashtag saving the planet. When it turns out it's about earning social currency rather than doing any real good. This is definitely a human made curse. This is, it's a human. It's tricky to escape and no one is immune from this. I'm not immune from this, but so many good causes, so many stated aims end up being the same thing, which is finding a pleasant self-identity or gaining some kind of social capital. Social capital probably being the, the most valuable thing, but we're slippery in the sense that it'll change forms and that concept will be elusive even to ourselves. <laughs> Well, now we know what the flower does, at least. Right, of course you would. But this is all for the trees. Doing it for the trees. Hashtag trees. Maybe we can teleport in Gakuganji. I knew they'd find a way eventually. He just floats on in, you know, <laughs> casually. I wonder how much he's witnessed, how he feels about Yuji's sudden expansion in power. Seems like he was underestimating him a bit. <laughs> Alright, Gakuganji, make me like you. With your epic guitar riffs. Ooh. Badass. <laughs> nice. He's got a tortured soul. Reminds me of Devil May Cry. Thinking about it later, the obvious guess was the money girl. But maybe that's too obvious. Who's, who is this character? Hmm? Look at them on the same team, sort of. <laughs> right, right. Pretty cool that they're gonna fight together, though. Alright, thanks for coming. No, that's not on the agenda. But... <laughs> yeah, when you're faced with the infinite, you're paralyzed, right? So many asses to kick. Where to even begin? Indeed. But Mihito's still lurking, so... I like it's not quite... Eh, uh, Gojo's here, it's over. Yeah, it's been a packed 30 minutes. Was he ever? There you go, eliminating options. Please take out Axe, dude. Thank you. Make him into a coat rack. Goodbye. No, kill him! <laughs> Alright, that'll do. Don't hold back. I don't think you're going anywhere. Yeah, there you go, some sense at least. It's already over. It's been taken care of. Yeah, I wonder how Toto feels. It seems like Gojo is the one person that is way ahead of him. So damn cool. <laughs> I like how all the trees get eviscerated. Socket trees, what have you done for us lately? <laughs> non standard. <laughs> Well, he might be able to wear a coat, but he won't be wearing gloves or shoes. Right. Right, he was there. He's here. What have you done? Oh, well, they actually got what they wanted. They wanted a Sukuna fi finger. Alright, I'm gonna throw this out there and say this was my, my favorite episode of the show so far. I don't really know what more you could want. Just unbelievable action. And not just in, in a snapshot or a segment. They took what was a cool action sequence and then like really made it a sequence and gave it to the audience. There was just so much of it. Toto already being cool, just looking even cooler. Not only with his powers, but his intellect continues to be a surprise and a treat. And then if that wasn't cool enough, Yuji smashing the, the Black Flash record in a way that's very protagonist, but not unbelievable, given who he is and given the amazing guidance of Toto and others who have come before him. There being a cool thematic backing for it that is maybe not made explicit in this episode, but I feel is, is solidly there and is in keeping with the themes of the show and what I suspect it's, it's building towards. And then if that wasn't enough, you get this is awesome demonstration of, of Gojo. See, I think a, a good measure of a show or movie or, or game or whatever is giving you what you want. That sounds simple, but what I mean by that is sometimes, sometimes, uh, media will will build something great but then has built it so great that they don't know how to use it or they, they can't use it you know i was making a joke about how the show now has to make every effort to keep gojo out and that's true to some extent but they found a way to use him and give you that feeling of power that you, you want from him without destroying the the sense of tension or conflict so it was able to do all those things at once my feeling throughout the episode was just like pure fun rarely have i enjoyed a villain ass kicking that much <laughs> juju sampo dogs or cats oof tough 
Neko kana. He's a protagonist, so he can't pick, right? He's got to be, got to be both. Dog, obviously. Inu kana. Eh, I'm definitely Neko. Tennis cats. Okay. He's a cat person. What are you doing? Aren't pandas connected to cats? Related to cats? That's the opposite of the truth. I mean, I think we'd all own pandas if we could. That Juju Sampo falls under the category of I could have watched 10 minutes of that.